Blessing saints, another week has hurried by. It's unbelievable. Don't forget your tithes and your offerings. Send them in. Believe God for a gener spirit of generosity to overshadow each and every one of you. There's always bills to pay and expenses. Don't forget our alms. Don't forget that we have missionaries that are looking for help and they're trusting God. And when they trust God, they have to also believe that God's going to work through the church. And we want to be faithful. And we want to make sure that we do our part. <clears throat> we know that um, you, you've received an email this week with a little survey on it. Please take some time. It'll take you probably five minutes to sit down, give us an update on your email, your phone number, your address. And if there's more than one adult in the house, you might, please, both of you, fill it out because we ask different questions. We ask the same questions, but each individual is going to have a different answer. So you both need to fill it out. Yesterday, we, were, we ended up with the angels telling the women to go and tell the disciples that Jesus was alive. He was not there. He has risen. And the most exciting part of that announcement to me was that they said, don't only just tell the disciples, make sure that you tell Peter. Why? Because Peter was in the slew of despondency. He had denied Jesus. He had betrayed his master. And he was uh, definitely feeling lower than low. And he was so discouraged. But when the women came and they said, oh, Peter, the angel of the Lord told us to tell you in particular that Jesus was alive. Peter's spirit must have soared. It must have lifted up. Well, all in, in, in that, we come back to the original setting when Jesus was addressing all of the disciples and he had just given them this uh, pronouncement that he was going to go away and that he was going to prepare a place and then he was going to come back and then he was going to take them with them and that they could follow, but they couldn't follow right now. And remember Thomas had blurted out, but Lord, we don't know where you're going and we don't know the way. In other words, he was flabbergasted. He was dismayed. Jesus, you're going to leave us? You're going to abandon us here? Jesus, don't do that. We need to know directions. We need to know where you're going. You can imagine the uh, panic that had set into Thomas's heart and to follow along into Philip's heart and all of the disciples. They were horror struck that Jesus was going to leave them. They thought they were on the verge of establishing the kingdom. And now Jesus gives them this major pronouncement that he's going away and they can't come, but they do know where he's going. But the trouble is they didn't understand and they had, when they had heard the message and the promises before, it didn't really sink in. Isn't that a lot like you and me? So often we hear the word of the Lord. We hear a word of scripture being shared. We read it and it just sort of goes right over our head and we, we miss the whole thing. But then by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit brings it back to us at a very important and relevant time. Well, Thomas said, we don't know. And so Jesus responded to Thomas just like he responded to Peter. And I believe just like he wants to respond to you. He doesn't want you to live in darkness or live in confusion. He wants you to know that you're, you, have a, you have a hope. And this is what he said to Thomas. Some of the most famous words, some of the most quoted words that Christians share with one another. He said to Thomas, I am the way. Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. Now, first of all, he said, I am. That meant that he was God. Now, that might have went right over their heads. He might have said it so fast that it didn't even sink in. But he would said it, nevertheless, I am. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I am the first and the last. I am he that was dead and is alive forevermore. I am. Jesus is the great I am. And then he said, Thomas, I'm the way. If you'll just follow me, if you'll just remember what I've said to you, I am the way. And by the way, Thomas, I am the truth. This Bible tells us in John chapter 1 that the law came by Moses, but 
by Jesus, through Jesus came grace and truth. And then he said, Thomas, I am the life. Don't have to worry about death. You don't have to fear the unknown. You don't have to be afraid of dying. I want you to know that I am the life. And so he started to put Thomas's fears at ease, at ease by reminding him that he was the way, the truth, and the life. I want you to think on these words for the next couple of days. Let them sink down into your spirit. Rejoice in them. Relish in them. And most of all, apply them and accept them as God's promise to you. If you're lost today, if you're not sure where you're going to spend eternity, grab a hold of these words. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So when you recognize that Jesus is calling out to you, he doesn't want to leave you behind. He's not going to forsake you. You just need to tag along. You need to grab on to his, his uh, shirt tail, as it were, and say, Jesus, remember me in this particular day and in this particular hour. I want to be your child. I want to be your servant. So today is your day of salvation. Today is your day to say, Jesus, save me. God, be with my friends as they watch this devotion. I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to comfort them, to strengthen them, and to help them. Let them be assured of their relationship with you, and may they be assured of their salvation and the fact that their sins are forgiven. Help them as they make this confession, and they cry out to you to be their source of life and strength. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. We'll talk to you next week.